Hello, I'm Jonah Gelso. Throughout the last few years, I've had the privilege to meet and work alongside some incredibly talented creative minds serving the film industry, both mainstream and independent alike. In this week's Road Highlight, I got to speak with seasoned sound designer Harry Cohen. From The Mask to Lone Survivor and every Tarantino film between, Cohen has kept audiences entranced with his sonic tapestries. I was at a recording studio to do some piano overdubs on a recording. While I was there, I was talking to the owner and the manager, and they asked me if I was interested in helping to organize their library of sound effects, which I agreed to do because I needed more work and this I was a struggling musician. Because I was conversant with synths and samplers, they asked me if I'd be interested in helping create some sound effects for some game shows that they were doing, which I did. And the owner just turned around and said, would you be interested in trying to do sound effects on a film? That's the way I got started. First, I was doing very, very low budget features. I did the new adventures of Mighty Mouse. I did all these like, you know, animated things. I was doing commercials. I was doing stuff for theme park. And then we started getting overflow work from another sound company, a company called Superior Sound, doing films for Roger Corman. He made the original Little Shop of Horrors, and they were all really low budget, but they were real movies. The first movie that really gave us some, uh, some visibility was The Mask. That's probably the movie that transitioned to, to where after that, if I said I did work on that movie, people actually knew what I was talking about. As far as speaking as a sound designer, the term has a lot of different meanings. One of them, in its most basic meaning, you're talking about the guy who is responsible for making sounds that don't exist in the real world. What does a laser sound like? What does a vampire sound like? What does a time-space vortex sound like? I tend to be really sensitive to the pitch of things, doing things like tuning church bells in the background so they're consonant with the music. We take the, the rhythm of the train and we put it in rhythm with the soundtrack. The project we just finished was called Lone Survivor. It's a movie about a SEAL team mission in Afghanistan. It's based on a real story. There's some really long running gun battles and, and we just finished another big gun movie, which was Django. Django was paying homage to Hollywood gunshots, classic ones in all of these great Westerns. But that didn't belong in a movie about a real story about, you know, SEAL team. The main challenge was that there's so many gunshots and such long gun battles that we knew we would uh, run the risk of just like beating the audience up for 1,600 feet. I made ways of making almost every gunshot unique in a way, in exaggerating the perspectives. When we're looking at the bad guys shooting, the guns are right there. And then we go back to the good guys. And even though the bad guys are only 20 yards away, suddenly their gunshots are much further away and they're in the surrounds. The soundscape is changing and evolving, and it's not just 1,600 feet of the same thing. The amount of effects that I was personally responsible for in the movie, it's, it's a lot. All of the guns and, the, and, the, you know, and everything to do with the gunfights and the vehicles, the helicopters, the jets, the overall composition of the scenes. I feel like I did what would have been the work of like three people maybe five or six years ago. When I started, I, I could spend all day making two or three sounds. You don't have that kind of time for every sound anymore. The plugins and just the whole workstation is so much more capable than it used to be. So I can make more stuff than I used to because I have to make more stuff than I used to. <laughs> With regard to what I talk to people who are looking to enter the industry, you have to be prepared to be flexible. Things are really changing in a big way because of the proliferation of stuff which is viewed on the web. There isn't less production going on than there used to. There's more. There's more places, there's more outlets. So if you're willing to be flexible, then you're more likely to, uh, to find an avenue to continue to practice and excel. <laughs>